Trauma Therapist Podcast, episode 478. All right, guys, welcome to the Trauma Therapist Podcast. My name is Guy McPherson. My mission is to raise awareness of trauma and to support new trauma therapists just starting out on the trauma-informed journey. I do that through this podcast and my membership community, Trauma Therapist 2.0. If you're a therapist of any kind interested in learning about trauma and you're looking for support and inspiration, I invite you to check out Trauma Therapist 2.0 by going to Trauma Therapist 2. Dot com. That's trauma therapist, the number two dot com. All right, let's get started. All right, folks, before we get started, I want to thank my sponsor for today, Somatic Experiencing. Are you in a helping profession and looking for a new tool to treat your clients? Somatic Experiencing, developed by Dr. Peter Levine, is a potent psychobiological approach to resolving the symptoms of trauma and chronic stress. Offered by the Somatic Experiencing Trauma Institute, the SE Professional Training Program enables you as a practitioner to empower your clients to learn tools that develop resilience and manage stress long term. If you'd like to learn more about how Somatic Experiencing can help you empower your clients, you can check out the SE Basics webinar at no charge by going to traumahealing.org slash trauma therapist. Once again, go to traumahealing.org forward slash trauma therapist before November 30th. All right. So five, four, three, two, and one. All right, guys, welcome back to the Trauma Therapist Podcast. Very excited to have today as my guest, Dr. Don Wood. Don, welcome. Thanks, Guy. How are you? All right. I'm doing well. Ready Good. to get into it. Looking forward to talking to you. Um, so Dr. Don Wood developed the Inspired Performance Institute after spending years research, researching how trauma affects our minds and our lives. Dr. Wood began to understand that events and experiences throughout our lifetime continue to play a role in how we experience life in the present. He also realized that there was a better way of treating the issue, teaching people to live with, manage, and cope with the daily stress doesn't fix the problem. The solution comes from understanding its source and providing a long-term permanent solution. Dr. Wood's background experience has come from spending time in the for-profit and non-profit worlds. Excuse me. This combination provided a new, unique perspective on problem solving. He used these skills to develop the Inspired Performance Institute and the Neuro XP program. All right. Don, welcome. Uh, before we get going here, share with our listeners where you're from originally and where you're currently residing, and then we'll dive in. I am originally a Canadian from Toronto, Canada, and um, we moved down to Florida almost 30 years ago. Okay. And so I now live in Orlando, Florida. Nice, nice. All right. So, you know, we're recording this. The uh, epidemic COVID is still happening the riots are happening um you know before we started recording you asked me how i was doing and i'm in oakland here and it's uh it's crazy um how are things where you are it's actually it hasn't been too bad there's been a little bit of um rioting most of it has been in miami i think they've had a bigger problem down there a little bit in tampa uh but nowhere near where some of these cities are seen it's it's right. really a shame how all this destruction. This was such a great opportunity for everybody to come together. And it, it seems like we're getting more and more divided. It's a shame. Yeah. yeah. And it's traumatizing. <laughs> not, not, you know, Absolutely. not to uh, mention the obvious here, but um, so let, let's get into what you do specifically. And let's start by, you know, I, I talked a little bit about in your bio, how your previous experience was in the for-profit sector and the non-profit sector. How did things unfold such that here we are right now? Well, really where it started was, um, I talk about my story and then my wife. Um, I grew up in this idyllic childhood where I had a very loving family, very nurturing. So my nervous system was constantly regulated. And like I said, I'm from Canada, I played hockey. So I wasn't a kid that would get bullied because I knew how to protect myself. So I sort of skated through my childhood without realizing that a lot of my friends were not experiencing life the way I was. Mm -hmm. They were dealing with a lot of trauma, abuse, physical, sexual, emotional. You know, I wouldn't see that in their family because if I went to my friend's house, everybody's on their best behavior. So you don't see that dysfunction and they don't talk about it. And when I met my wife, I was 18. 
and um, she was 18 as well. And so I saw that there was something going on in that household. And then before long, we got married very young. I had a chance to play professional hockey in Sweden. So we got married at 19. But I quickly saw that she was living in a very, very different household than I grew up in with a very angry, dysfunctional father. So she was constantly living in fear. And I thought to myself, well, this will be okay because when I get her out of that household and she's living mm -hmm. with me, everything will calm down. <laughs> and it didn't. So it didn't matter what I did. I could speak calmer. I could I try to choose my words better, you know, because I was very sensitive to how I could make her cry so easily. And I was never intending to try to do that. And I couldn't understand why it wasn't calming down. And what I realized is that this trauma was creating a loop. And so trauma gets, gets basically stored in high definition. This is what I, I call it. When we have memory, we're the only animal on the planet that stores explicit details about events and experiences. All that information is stored. And because it was traumatic, when you think about how's it going to record a traumatic event, very bright and intense because all your senses are heightened, sight, smell, hearing. So it's recording that information in high definition. And where the issue the, the, is coming in for most people is that our subconscious, our survival brain, is operating about 95% of everything that's happening for us. Our conscious mind, which is so brilliant, is really not in charge, especially when it comes to survival. It's the survival brain, the subconscious mind that creates that autonomic nervous system response. That's always present and in the moment. So everything happening for the subconscious mind, just like the animal mind, is happening now. And so if you read all the self-help books, they'll tell you, be present, be in the moment. However, our minds don't work like that because we keep getting pulled out by this traumatic memory that's looping. And so that would then take my wife out of staying present and she would be in, without realizing it, looking at a whole bunch of traumatic information in order to respond to what is actually happening now. So this flood of data was constantly coming in that she didn't realize. So for example, if I said something like, no, I don't like that, she could start to tear up and say, why are you mad at me? Mm -hmm. And I would say, honey, I'm not mad at you. Why do you think I'm mad at you? And she'd say, well, the way you said it sounded like you were getting mad. Now, what had happened as a child, she had learned to listen very, very carefully to the way her father spoke. And if she heard that there was a slight change in elevation or inflection in his voice, that meant that he was starting to get mad. And so that was her time to protect herself. So when I would say, no, I don't like that, if she heard the slightest change in my mm -hmm. vocal tone, her mind would then start pulling up a whole bunch of information from her childhood. And this flood of data would come in and totally dysregulate her nervous system. So I kept thinking it was what I was saying that was affecting her and it wasn't. It was all this traumatic data flooding in at the same time. That's when I realized what the problem was. And the way we teach people is to live and manage and cope with it but that's not the solution. The solution is right. to get to the underlying root and get it updated and reset. So when this was going on, when you, first of all, you talked about, you know, your childhood contrasted with your wife's childhood, her household, it sounded like you were sensitive uh, to, to realize what was going on in her home. Cause a lot of people don't pick up stuff unless, you know, stuff is happening. That's right in front of you. Right. Um, and then also when uh, you guys got together and you got married, you noticed certain things were happening. So were you, did you have another a, a particular job at this point? Uh, I'm curious no, how things unfolded for you in terms of uh, professionally, how you got into this field. Well, not really, because I was in the financial services business. I was always an entrepreneur. Okay. And then when we moved down to Florida, we started a nonprofit organization dealing with a lot of people who had experienced, because I always said to my wife, I know you're going to be able to use this for something, right? This is going to help other people, other, you know, but she did not have that strength to be able to do that on her own. So we started a nonprofit that worked with uh, missing children to try to help parents who had lost a child because that's mm -hmm. trauma. And so that's what started it all. 
and we were able to help a lot of missing children and then we said you know we need to help more people than just missing children so it got into you know people who had dealt with trauma and that's what really started me on the research as to how trauma is affecting people on a day-to-day -day basis and that's when i realized that trauma is actually creating inflammation in the body the inflammation is affecting our immune system and our neurotransmitters so people are getting sicker because their immune system is compromised. That's why so many abuse victims have autoimmune disorders because their immune system is compromised. And whenever you're in that constant fight or flight state, your mind is not doing maintenance or it's doing minimal maintenance. That's why they're getting sicker. And then they're not feeling good because their neurotransmitters are compromised as well. So they start experiencing anxiety, depression, all kinds of different things because the system is dysregulated. It's not meant to be like that. So your fight or flight response is an emergency management system. But for my wife and for so many other people, it's become an operating system. It's turned on almost all the time. My wife would be looking for danger everywhere. Wow. And especially people who have had trauma are so sensitive to sounds and noise. So if you notice when people have experienced trauma, they'll be very, very sensitive to anything loud, a loud noise. They hear things completely different than I would have. So even though my voice to me didn't change at all, to my wife, it was like I was yelling. Mm -hmm. As soon as my voice pattern would change a little bit. So I could have been maybe frustrated from something at work that day. I come home. I'm not mad at her at all. Right. But I've got a little frustration in my voice just because that's how we deal day to day. And that would come across to her as very hurtful, as if it was directed at her. Right. Right. Wow. So you uh, switch gears from uh, helping kids out to developing was this first iteration, the Inspired Performance Institute? But yeah. It actually okay. was. So and, I studied the What was the goal first. there? What was the, okay, go ahead. You studied trauma first. Yeah, to try to figure okay. out how is the best way to deal with this? What are they currently doing? How can we make it better? Okay. And what I realized is everything is all built around management of the problem. Managing anxiety, managing depression, managing panic attacks. And what I realized is if we could get the mind to reset that traumatic information, we could change the response. The problem is it's a glitch. It's an error message. The mind is actually seeing that data in real time. Mm -hmm. So I worked with uh, uh, Rebecca Gregory from the Boston Marathon. And Rebecca was three feet from the first bomb at the Boston Marathon. So when she first sat down to talk with me, she uh, started to talk about what had happened that day and she was shaking and crying. And I said, Rebecca, do you know why you're shaking and crying right now? And she says, well, because I'm telling you about what happened to me. And I said, correct. But your mind thinks there's a bomb about to go off. It's seeing this information in real time. So what I always say is anytime you have an emotion, a feeling, a sensation, your mind is calling for an action. The purpose of fear is to run or escape from a threat. The purpose of anger is to attack a threat. So if you talk about something that happened to you five years ago or 10 years ago and you feel those emotions, your mind is actually thinking that it needs an action to stop it or to escape. Does that make sense? Well, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I mean, it's reminding me a lot of what Peter Levine is talking about when he was talking about um, uh, animals, you know, when, when they were traumatized, they, they're able to run to, to express that uh, need that the, the body has. And oftentimes when humans are traumatized, they don't have, when they get traumatized, they don't have that ability to oftentimes fight or flight. And so a lot of the treatment in, in that case, body-based work is, you know, uh, expressing that or working through that in a sense. Um, so, so go on here. So what happened with her? Uh, with Rebecca or my wife? No, Rebecca. Rebecca. So we went through the program. It's a four hour program. And what I'm able to do is to get the mind to reset that information. So instead of, so I'll start off with, I can even ask you, can you remember what you ate for dinner last night? 
Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, I can. So, so, so tell me what you ate for dinner last night. <laughs> well, our, I have to preface this by saying our, our gas was shut off. Our gas got shut off because a plum from our plum tree fell down and hit the emergency uh, oh earthquake God. shut off valve. So anyway, That's we came hysterical. home, didn't have gas. So we cooked pancakes on our electric griddle. <laughs> so and people now because this is on on zoom they'll see it when i asked you that question you looked up and you saw pictures right of where you were or what you ate yeah 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 that's how you stored the information about what you ate for dinner last night no animal can do that they don't store that kind of detail now because last night wasn't threatening or disturbing it was stored as a fairly low resolution file right not a lot of detail Right. Had that been a threatening event, mm. your senses are much more in tune. So we take in a lot more information, a lot more data during those kinds of experiences. So everything is very intense, tremendous detail to it. So what happens is that's that high definition. What, I, what I'm able to do is during that four hour session is to get you into an ability to reset that information into the same format as what you ate for dinner last night. Mm -hmm. And as soon as that happens, the mind no longer calls for the action because it doesn't feel threatened by it. It's just information. But as long as it sees that high definition data, it's going to respond automatically. Your autonomic nervous system will respond to a threat. It's well, perceiving the information as a threat. Yeah, I mean, as you're talking, it, it, it's very interesting to me, Don, because you know I'm thinking about all the different trauma treatment modalities out there, right? Whether they're body-based or cognitive-based, EMDR, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So how did, I guess with all that, you know, you said you, you went to school, you started studying trauma. What made you say, okay, well this, I'm not seeing the treatment here, I'm not seeing the treatment there. How did you get to uh, this treatment, treatment modality? And what is it called? All right, folks. I want to thank my sponsor for today, BetterHelp. They're at betterhelp.com, online therapy platform. So I have a question for you. Is, is there something, anything that you feel that's interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals right now? And you're probably saying, well, yeah, of course, guy, we're living in this crazy, unprecedented time. And for me, it's the same. It's the same. Yeah, of course, that's it. But there's also... Um, a lot of you know that I've struggled with anxiety throughout my life. You know, it's, it's come and gone, it's waxed and waned. And I chose to see a therapist to help me work through that. And I'm not completely free of it, but I want to invite you to check out betterhelp.com. They're an online therapy platform that will help you assess your needs and then match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can go online, log into your account once you sign up, and send your uh, therapist messages. You'll get back timely, thoughtful responses, and then you can set up uh, weekly sessions either via phone or video. And the, one of the great things about this is that you know a lot of us don't want to get into therapy because we feel, let's face it, we're not going to have a good match, or they're not going to listen to us, or it's just not going to be a good fit. Better help is committed to finding you, to matching you with someone who's going to be a great fit. So they make it really easy to change therapists if you need to. And there's no fee for that. You know, they have a lot of uh, testimonials up on their website. That's it's kind of crazy because there's just so many of them. And I just want to share one here. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, one person wrote in about the therapist. They said, I highly recommend Sharon as a therapist. She listens with no judgment and offers immediate support and suggestions. I feel safe with her helping me because I know that she is solution oriented. She's clear, serious, and she's also kind. Not bad. <laughs> uh, testimonial there. So look, as a trauma therapist podcast listener, BetterHelp is offering you 10% off your first month when you go to betterhelp.com forward slash TTP. That stands for Trauma Therapist Podcast. So it's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com forward slash TTP to sign up. You can join the other 1 million, over 1 million people doing the same thing, taking charge of their mental health and uh, making it happen. All right, see you there. Bye. A uh, tip. T-I-P-P, -P. we call it the Inspired Performance Program, TIP. Okay. 
So how did you get to the point where you're like, wait a minute, this needs to happen. Things need to be treated a little differently in the, and in this way. Um, it just really came from just sort of experimenting with it, you know, and again, I, I trained in EMDR, rapid resolution therapy, a whole bunch of different protocols and a sort of, you know, cognitive therapy. And what it was, was just sort of putting together some really good pieces like EMDR is good, but EMDR takes longer. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's much more intrusive. I can do it much quicker without having to go through multiple sessions. And what I found is, is that if I can get the session to be longer, I can get more work done. Where mm-hmm. typically it's an hour at a time if you go through typical treatment, whether it's CBT or EMDR, they'll do one session and then you'll come back to another session. I get a lot done in the four hours. In fact, I get pretty much all of it done. So it's, that's what made it unique. Mm-hmm. And so in the beginning, it was like, can you get people to sit for four hours? Right. And what's amazing is that people will. It doesn't even feel like four hours. Most people will say it felt like an hour, an hour or two at the most. So, I mean, I realize we don't have a lot of time, but I'm, I'm really curious if you can give us a little, break this down a little more about what it is you're doing. You're talking about resetting. What does that mean? What does that look like? So what would do is I spend a lot of time on the education so people can understand first what the problem is. So what I say is there's nothing wrong with anybody. There's nothing wrong with anybody's mind. Your mind has experienced life differently than mine has. So your mind is using those old resources to be responding. So if you've had a lot of um, trauma, which is what my wife had, that the mind never felt safe because it was constantly feeling fear. Mine didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that I couldn't have a bump along the way or a bruise, right? I call those emotional concussions. They're not traumatic events, but they're bumps. I could heal much quicker because I was able to um, get back into that present state. So what I'm really doing is when we have a traumatic event, I talk about the different brain waves. And when you have a traumatic event, you go into a very high intense beta brainwave state. In beta, your mind is cycling at about 15 to 30 hertz or cycles per second. So it's taking in tremendous amounts of information. When it's in that state, because it's stored all this um, data about the event, when I have somebody in that four-hour session, I'm able to get them into an alpha brainwave state. And alpha is a very, very relaxed focus state, and it's cycling between 7 and 14 hertz. That's the state they believe Albert Einstein lived in most of the time. Hmm. So it's very relaxed, but super focused. So what I'm able to do is by having them in an alpha brainwave state, we then bring in the memory that's been stored in beta. And when we do that, the mind is able to reprocess a beta memory, very intense, into an alpha brainwave state. It takes a lot of that intensity out of it. And now it becomes stored as an alpha memory which doesn't feel threatened because it's taken all that intensity out of it. And a lot of times people will say to me after they go through, I'll I'll take them through probably two or three different events. I don't have to do all of them. Mm -hmm. After we finish one particular technique, they'll say, I'll ask them, go back now and, and look at that memory again. And then just tell me what it looks like now. And a lot of times people will say, you know, it's really almost hard to see, you know, it's Mm -hmm. just sort of like, yeah, it's there, but there's no real, I'm not feeling the emotion anymore. That's what we're going for. Because the only purpose to that emotion was to get them to do something about something that's not happening. Mm-hmm. Right? And so I said, that doesn't make sense. So if you have a, um, a memory that you feel an emotion, that means it's still active. The mind is not okay with it and it wants to do something about it. But it can't do anything. So for example, with Rebecca the runner, uh, when you were sitting with her, uh, she was feeling kind of activated and you were like, you, your mind or your, you want to act. How did that, uh, what did you do in that situation? Or what did she do in that situation? So she never thought of it that way. You know, what we sort of respect emotions that emotions are, you know, well, it's okay to have an emotion. It's okay to be. And I say, yeah, it's okay to have an emotion if it's appropriate to the situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If there's a threat and you feel fear, that makes sense that you're feeling fear. There's nothing wrong with that. 
But if you're feeling fear, when you think about like with Rebecca, it'd been five years since the Boston Marathon bombing. And she actually wasn't a rudder, she was a spectator. And so what she would be feeling is that fear because her mind thought something was happening. So once I go through all the education of what's happening, and I say, there's nothing wrong with you having this fear because of the way your mind has stored the information. Let's reset that information. I mean, Hollywood has made trillions of dollars on that. Right? Mm -hmm. Why do we go to a movie and cry? Why do we go to a movie and jump? Because the mind sees that information in real time and thinks something's happening, right? Consciously, we can make that determination that the movie's not real, right? But the subconscious mind takes over in a threat mode. So if it feels threatened, it's going to respond. So with Rebecca, I was able to first do the education, which takes about an hour, hour and a half. And then we start getting into some of the relaxation techniques to get her into an alpha brainwave state. And then I take her through a few techniques, particular events. And, and Rebecca had more than just the Boston Marathon. But most people would think that would be the one that would be the major one creating problems. But she had other stuff as a child, other traumas. And that's this cumulative, you know, compounding effect, similar to what my wife had had. Mm -hmm. So we went through two or three events. And by the time we were finished, she could completely talk about the Boston Marathon without crying or shaking. She said, I have a terror nightmare every night. Mm -hmm. She said, um, she says, I know when I go to bed, I'm going to have a terror nightmare. And I've had them for five years. After she went through the program, zero. She hasn't had any more. Wow. My wife would have terror nightmares, maybe one or two a month. Nothing like Rebecca's, not quite as bad as hers. But I would have to wake my wife up in the middle of the night because she was holding her breath and crying and trying not to make a sound. It was sort of a constant um, nightmare that she would have repeating. After she went through the program, she hasn't had a nightmare. I've never had to do that again for her. So really the key is to get the information reset. So we're doing mm -hmm. the opposite of what they did with the Wizard of Oz and took it from black and white to color. We're mm -hmm. taking it from color to black and white. Mm -hmm. And the mind no longer responds. Let me just remind everyone, I'm speaking with Dr. Don Wood of the Inspired Performance Institute. So this is really fascinating to me. And it's, it's just interesting, interesting again to me because there are so many different modalities out there. Um, I mean, you know, you talked about your process of providing psychoeducation, but also it also sounds like what you're doing there. It's obviously you're developing some kind of a therapeutic relationship with them. You're putting them at ease. They're feeling uh, safe, right? Slowly at this point, they're, system is uh, becoming less activated, hopefully, ideally at this time. All these things I think are important to mention too. Um, why do you think this is working, as you said, faster than something like EMDR or uh, other modalities? What I, I think it's a lot of it is in the education. When people understand the biggest fear we have is uncertainty. For, for humans, not knowing what the problem is, is worse than the problem sometimes. Yeah. And so because they don't understand why they're experiencing this, why do I feel angry all the time? Or why do I feel scared all the time? When I explain how the mind works, and then they go, that makes so much sense. I've never thought of it that way. Then you say, well, the solution is this. It makes so much sense that the relaxation just comes in naturally they're mm -hmm. ready to have it um you know get healed and what i always say is the mind and body are designed to heal so what is interfering with it healing it's this glitch the way and so if you go through say cognitive behavioral therapy can that help sure but it takes long time because you're only getting little bits and pieces done over a longer period of time. What I'm doing is very intensive, but it feels very relaxed. And the great part about it is I don't have to have them share a lot of information. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, if I work with a, a rape survivor, she doesn't have to sit there and describe the rape. I can do it just visually in her mind. I have no idea what, the, what happened during that rape. I can clear that without her having to share one word. Mm -hmm. So that feels very, very safe. 
but doesn't. visually or in, in memory, she's re-experiencing it. She's re-experiencing okay. that, but she's doing that now from an alpha brainwave state. So she'll be experiencing the memory in that beta state, but she's also in an alpha brainwave state. And it very, so frequencies will align. So that higher frequency will come back into balance as the mind reprocesses that information in a very safe environment. Mm. And the thing that's interesting is I've done this, uh, I have an online program as well, which is exactly the same four hour program, but you're just watching the videos. So it's not even that personal one-on-one -on -one with me and it's working very well. I've also done it in groups where I have large groups of people and I can take them through the same process and mm -hmm. that works. Wow. So it, to me, really what it is, is the four hours, the education, right? Getting the person into that state there. What I always say to them is your mind's doing all the work. You know, it's like coming in with a broken leg. I reset the leg, right? What did I do? I just yeah. reset the leg, right. right? I didn't heal it. Your body, your system healed it. All we had to do is get it reset. And that's what I'm doing in this process. So you mentioned your online program. Where can people access that? Uh, if you go to our website, so it's the Inspired Performance Institute, and you can either do a one-on-one -on -one session with me, you can do a um, the the online program. You can purchase that as well. Okay. Um, I'm just checking out the website here again. Okay, touch my nose about. Yeah, we have some amazing. And here's one of the great things, guys. That what I talked about is I don't say this is necessarily therapy it's a performance program. What's interfering with your ability to perform at your highest level? And what I have found is it's trauma, trauma or these disturbing events and experiences, the emotional concussions. So when I frame it that way, and I start off with that there's nothing wrong with you, right? I even work with people in addiction and I say to them, there's nothing wrong with you. You had emotional or physical pain. You then started to take a substance to stop the pain because you repeated it, you built a code because our minds do coding. So it learns through repetition, just the same way an animal brain works. If you want to teach an animal how to do something, you repeat it until it builds its own code for it. And then the animal automatically does it. I believe addiction is just a code. That's not a disease. You're not broken and defeated. What you've done is repeated something enough times that your mind has then created a natural automatic response to it and and it's survival based that's why it's so hard for them to break it because if your mind right. thinks that it needs this drug for survival and then somebody comes along and says no i'm taking away that drug right it's like taking a bone away from a dog the dog could be the most passive dog but try to take its bone away right, right? it's going to bite you have you found that this uh modality is working with all types of trauma Across the board? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We're, you know, getting PTSD um, complete. Like, well, they won't have PTSD. Um, panic attacks. We're eliminating panic attacks, which is a the number one emergency room visit now is panic attacks. And <sighs> after people go through this program, we've got, if you look at our site, you'll see a lot of testimonials of people who have had anxiety, panic attacks, depression, that... I believe what depression is, is that the mind has been calling for an action. So say, for example, if somebody comes in who has depression, I'll say, what are you angry about? And then they'll say, well, I'm not angry, I'm depressed. And I say, well, depression is the absence of an emotion, right? The mind has actually shut down. It's been calling for these actions to do something about something that it can't do, mm -hmm. right? But it doesn't know it can't do it because it thinks it's real. And so it keeps asking for the action, can't get it. So it shuts down and goes into depression, which because the emotions no longer have worked. And so when you get to the root of what created that response, right, the depression should lift because the only purpose of depression is protection against the pain. Right, right. Well, all right, Dr. Don, uh, again, it's uh, the inspiredperformanceinstitute.com. We'll have this linked up at the show notes page here at the traumatherapistpodcast.com. So in terms of a go-to book recommendation, would you offer? Um, well, I have a couple of books. Okay. So the first one is, which is really talking about the program and how the program was developed uh, and how that the pharmaceutical industry has really taken over. I mean, the go-to every time now is a drug. 
and I'm not completely anti-drug. I'm just saying this should not become a lifestyle. This should be a temporary solution to get somebody through until they can get some help, right? The problem is, is that they put people on these antidepressants for years and years and years, and I don't really believe they need to be. So if it's a temporary, so my book talks about that and then how the solution that we came up with, with tip. Um, it's a great book. It's called, you must be out of your mind and you can purchase that on our site or even on Amazon. And then the second book I wrote is called emotional concussions. And what I meant by that was these are the little events and experiences, a coach telling you, you'll never be good enough or you'll never make it or a teacher saying that you're stupid, right? As much as those things you wouldn't think have an effect on us, they do. And so quite often, these kinds of events will creep in to our thought process. And then somebody will then start to feel like they don't even actually even pick up and recognize it, but it's still affecting them. And so those kinds of little emotional concussions can also be affecting the way that our success or, you know, what, how we're dealing with life in the present is being affected by those. Uh, so once again, those two books, you must be out of your mind and, and also emotional concussions. We'll have those linked up also. So in terms of uh, kind of suggestions or advice for the therapists out there who are listening to this, who are like really curious um, about this program, do you have training programs for therapists and so forth? Um, we are going to. So one of the things that we want them to do is not necessarily train on how to do the program, but how to take people through our online program. Okay. Because one of the things like, you know, there's, there are great modality. EMDR is a great modality. The problem with it is, is if the practitioner isn't really skilled in it, right, they may not be able to get the effect that they're looking for. They may not have spent enough time. It took a long time to develop this. And so even they may be a skilled practitioner in many other areas, there's a certain vocal tone and pitch and pattern and everything to this kind of a program. And that would take some time to learn. Mm -hmm. So I thought the best way is to give them the tool, which is me taking them through an online program and they can then just take their, you know, their client through that. Okay. And that has worked. We've been testing that out a little bit and that seems to be working very well. So they would be trained on how the program works, why it works and how to take them through it. Got it. Got it. All right, Don. Uh, exciting stuff here. How long have you been doing this? I started training in it about 2009. Okay. And um, so, you know, 10, 11 years. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, <laughs> Again, just it, it's, I mean, I just really appreciate you sharing how this, these things, this blossomed for you with, you know, your wife and encountering her experience. And uh, it's just inspiring to see that uh, you've developed this and are working to help people. My, my daughter also um, had trauma that we didn't know about when she was between six and eight. Oh. When she was 14, she was diagnosed with Crohn's. And then when she was 16, she told us about this abuse that had happened to her when she was younger. We were devastated. We had no idea that it had happened at all. And my wife especially, because she said, I was such a hawk. I thought that couldn't oh, possibly man. happen to my child. So my daughter suffered really badly with Crohn's. She had four resections done on her intestines. She was oh, on man. a constant daily dose of steroids for years. And then after we started, and this is probably more the reason why we started looking for answers. Um, was really for my daughter because they told us eventually she's just going to end up with a colostomy bag. And so as I started studying trauma, I realized I think that her symptoms are coming from trauma. And that's why I say that I believe unresolved trauma creates inflammation in the body. Mm. And so for her, the inflammation ended up in her intestinal area. Now, ever since she's gone through the program, she hasn't had a Crohn's flare up. So she wow. had a cyst had formed on her ovary and fallopian tube a few years back. And the doctor operated, took the cyst out. And when he uh, came in after the operation, he said to her, he said, um, your chart says you have Crohn's. And she says, yeah, I have Crohn's. And he says, but I operated. There's no evidence of any Crohn's. And she says, yeah, I haven't had a flare up for a while. And he said, but you're not on any medication for Crohn's. And she says, no, I haven't taken any medication. He says, well, I hate to tell you this. He says, you've never had Crohn's. And she says, oh, I've had Crohn's. I've gone down to 90 pounds. And wow. she says, I've had four operations. He says, but Crohn's doesn't go away. 
And so I explained to them that I believe that when we resolve the trauma, right, the inflammation, the cells go into that cell danger response. So for her, the cell danger response ended up in that area. Mm -hmm. When we calmed that down by resolving the trauma, then the inflammation went down and then her, her immune system came back online. And he said to me, that's impossible. He said, if that was true, you'd have a Nobel Peace Prize. I says, well, then tell me what Crohn's is. And he said, Crohn's is a lifelong debilitating disease with no known cure. And I said, Crohn's is inflammation. And I believe the inflammation caused by the trauma looping. So she was in this constant cell danger mm -hmm. response, right, in her lower intestinal area. My wife has Hashimoto's. So she developed, you know, another autoimmune because her um, cortisol levels were constantly on. So she was in a constant state of fight or flight. So, so many um, people, and in particular women, have autoimmune issues. And I believe it's most of it, maybe not all of it, but a lot of it, I believe, is coming from this unresolved trauma. Mm. Wow. Man, thanks for sharing that story about your daughter. That's intense. All right, Don. Um, best way for people to get in contact with you is what? Through the website? Inspired Performance Yep, through Institute. the website. Um, yep, we can respond back if you have questions or whatever. And um, I think it should be in the in the show notes as well. I think that you have as well. Yep. And I just appreciate the opportunity to come on. I love what you're doing and getting out there because people need to understand that they don't have to live with this, right? right there are right. some answers and they can get better. We're, we're designed to heal. Awesome. All right, man. Great having you on. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks, guy. Take All care. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye. All right, folks, the SE Trauma Institute hopes you enjoy today's episode. And a reminder, if you're looking to learn more about the transformational practice of somatic experiencing, you can get complimentary access to the SE Basics webinar by going to traumahealing.org slash trauma therapist. Once again, traumahealing.org forward slash trauma therapist before November 30th, 2020.